Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Victoria Garrick, and today I'm gonna to be giving you five tips to becoming a better passer. Now, I wanna make sure that you guys know this is not a traditional video. I'm not gonna be telling you how to pass, how to grip your platform. I'm assuming that you're not a beginner, you know how to pass, and now you just wanna take it to the next level and become an elite passer. So, I'm gonna be giving you mental tips and physical tips and just five easy things you can add to your game that will make you that much better. Also, Serve, receive, and passing is the, for me, most challenging part of the game. It's so mental, you can get in your head so easily, but it's also the most important part of the game. So I just wanna help you guys take it to the next level. I hope you guys keep watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. New videos every Monday, and let me know what you think down below. Let's get started. So the first tip I wanna give you is to reframe your role. Now what that means is usually as a passer, we're super focused on how we are doing. Am I passing perfect? Am I a good passer? Was that good? It just naturally becomes very self-centered. This is such a normal thing. I've been there because obviously our passes are getting statted and everyone's watching us that we can sort of let all of those thoughts overwhelm us. So I want you to reframe what your responsibility is as a passer. And this mental tip can work wonders and it really did for me. So instead of thinking, am I a good passer? Was that a perfect pass? I want you to reframe it and say, I'm gonna do everything I can to give my setter a great opportunity. And when you view it as that, as you have an opportunity to give something to another teammate, you really feel less pressure because you're focused on how you can help someone else shine. Another thing I do is to just stay out of my head as opposed to just being quiet and thinking those things. I will say them. Let's say my setter's name is Sophie. This is how that would look. Okay, Sophie, I have a pass for you right here. Fine. Yeah, so, come on, come on. Good. Okay, I got you a little higher. I can pull you off, yeah. Balls, I was thinking about how I could help Sophie get up in a place where she could make a good set and I didn't have one negative thought come into my head about how I was doing and if a pass wasn't good enough I would just think about how I can make it better for her not better to make me look good so this is like an advanced mental tip that really helped me in the pack 12 so I hope that made sense um, and now let's move on to tip number two okay the second tip is be trustworthy you want to stick to your word and honor what you say and what that means is when you have scenes, and let's say this is my passing buddy, this person's in middle back and I'm in right back, let's say the server's in zone one and I say I have deep and I have uh, short. I have just told this person that I'm going to get these balls. So no matter how hard, how difficult it looks, I have to make this move here or make this move here so that this person trusts me. Even if it's hard, even if you decide you don't wanna do it in the moment, um, being true to your word is really important. And obviously, it's not always easy, and we don't always say exactly what we're gonna do, right? I've been in situations where I've been like, in, 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 and the ball is out. But I think it's important to just keep yourself accountable. So in a situation where I say, oh, I have your deep, and then I don't get it, I'm like, oh, next time I got deep, that was on me, I told you I'd get it, I got the next one, you could trust me. Or, so sorry, I read that ball was out, next ball. And usually you don't even have to be that apologetic because if you just establish yourself as a trustworthy passer, your teammates will know that you are giving your best effort and if you make a miscalculation, it was only something that like is natural. We all make mistakes. So this is what it would look like to be true to your team. Okay, I have deep, I have short. Fine, fine, fine. I have deep. So it's kind of hard to picture with um, a cart, but what you saw is every single time I called the seams and then I was honest and I was count accountable in those seams. So that's the second thing is just be trustworthy. And if you make a mistake, just communicate that with your teammate. Okay, the third tip is take mental notes. Now what that means is every single time you see a server serving, you're gonna find something that helps you identify them, their number, how their ponytail is, what their face looks like, and then you're gonna attach maybe one or two things about how they serve. So the first time you see someone go around, if you say, okay, she serves deep and fast. Those are two things I'm now remembering. And obviously when we get into a game, we've scouted a team, I might think I know, 
but there's nothing that can teach me how to handle a server like when I actually see their server. So that first time the server comes around, I, I receive, the point goes on, but I remember, okay, number 10, deep and fast, deep and fast. Then the next time 10 comes around, I'm like, okay, this was the girl that served deep and fast. And now after that next rotation, I'm like, deep, fast, and she loves cross court. Or she, in this game, loves hitting our scene. So I'm taking those mental notes, which is allowing me to be studying my competition during the game and getting better throughout the game as I pass and pass them. So this is important because sometimes we can be really mindless. We can just be in a game and then we can just pass the serve and move on and we don't even know who served us. When you're an elite passer, you are knowing who is serving and what all their serves are like. And throughout the game, you're registering that in your memory. Let's see how that looks. All right, here's the first server. Um, let's see, oh wow, that was fast. That was fast, okay, let's pause it. And let's watch that back in slow motion. Okay, so server comes into the zone and then very quickly goes into the serving approach, not really giving us a lot of time to prepare. He serves quickly. Okay, same thing, right in and serving, little time to prepare as a passer over the net. Let's pause that. Okay, so the first obvious mental note from this server is we are not gonna have a lot of time to call seams, talk to our passers and get prepared to pass. We're just gonna have to be ready as soon as the whistle blows because this server likes to fire it right away. Let's see how his ball looks when it crosses the net. Okay, so a sort of a spinning float, deep, straight ahead, fast and drops. All right, let's move on to the next server. All right, second server. I'm going to pretend it's not me. Let's see what she does. Um, okay, this server has a routine. And okay, that was pretty straightforward. Let's see the second serve. So this server has a little routine she does. She takes her time. And it looks like she is serving and approaching where she wants the ball to go. Okay, pause. Let's watch what it looks like when her ball comes over the net. Okay, that ball looks like it's coming a little bit to her right. Um, let's see the second one. Okay, yeah, and oh, she can mix in a different pace. So from the second server, we know that she likes to sort of serve where she's facing and she can also mix up the depth of her serve. Those would be the mental notes that I'm making. Okay, so those are just some of the obvious things you can pick up when you watch a server. Let's get back to the video. So in looking at server one and server two, I hope that you guys were able to pick up things that were different as well. And obviously when you get to an elite level, servers can hit all areas of the court, they can alternate their speeds, but there's still things you can be looking at and studying. Like every time the server starts really close to the line, they're doing a quick short serve. Or when they start deeper, they like to hit it deeper. So there's always things and tendencies you can be picking up if you're looking. And don't overwhelm yourself by trying to find two or three things the first round, because there's a lot to remember during a volleyball game. Maybe just start small, like this server serves fast, deep and fast. Um, and then, yeah, keep those notes as you go on. So that third tip was take mental notes. And now we're gonna move on. Okay, the fourth tip, well that looks like eight. The fourth <laughs> tip is to move on quickly. This is not your ex-boyfriend, girlfriend that you're still crying about. It's been two months, like in a volleyball game, if you get aced, you need to wipe your mind and move on. Well, don't actually wipe your mind because we wanna learn from our mistakes, but you do not wanna hold on to that and feed into that negativity. I don't care if you're the coolest people at school are watching and all of their moms and you get aced. I've been aced on national TV. I've been aced by some of the best servers in the conference. It's normal, we all make mistakes. You can get aced once and then make sure you learn from that and don't get aced any other part in the game. That's really gonna help you because I think at the end of the day, great passers are not perfect, they're consistent. And being consistent, being consistently good as opposed to striving for perfection and getting really frustrated when you make a mistake, is gonna help you so much more and make you a reliable, a reliable player and a reliable teammate. I tried to be one of those players where if I got aced, my team wouldn't freak out and be like, oh no, Vic got aced, like now she's gonna spiral down. It was like, oh, Vic got aced, but she's fine, she'll get the next one. Um, I always wanted to be that player. So even if I got aced, I would be like, my bad, I got the next one, got the next one. And then we go back and I'm like, okay, what happened there? So I wanna show you two versions of self-talk. One that I wanna stay away from and the second that I want you guys to practice. Okay, this better be good. Ugh, oh my God, that was terrible. I cannot believe I just did that. Ugh, okay, well, um, ugh, 
Wow, I suck. Okay, here we go, nice and easy. Oh, it's deep, it's deep. Oh, shoot, okay. Next time, I'm gonna recognize that sooner and open up. Okay, great, here we go, new ball. Left, hold. Cool. I hope that gives you guys a little bit of a better idea of how important it is how we talk to ourselves. Um, and one thing I was doing was just noticing why I got ace and then fixing that the next time around. That's also called the growth mindset. And that's something I'm gonna make another video about and really dive into it. But just to give you a little quick tidbit, when you have a mistake or you make an error, think about why the error happened and what you can do next time to prevent it. So why did this happen? What can I do better? And then move on. So don't call them back, don't text them back, just move on, wipe it clear, go to the next point. So that is also a very useful tip that I hope helps you as well. Okay, we are almost done with the video. I hope you guys are enjoying it. This is tip number five, the fifth and final tip of how to become a better pastor. This tip is aim high and off. Now I know what you're thinking, but I wanna be a perfect pastor. I wanna be a great pastor. Why would you tell me to pass high and off the net? Well, the reason is because when we aim for a perfect pass, when we aim for that tiny little zone, the chances of making an error are greater Whereas when we have a bigger target, there's a lot more room for us to use and like kind of mess up if we needed to. So while it's good to be a perfect passer and pass perfectly, a lot of times when I'm in a game and the serving is really hard or I just don't feel great about it, rather than having this mindset of I have to pass it perfectly, I'm like, I'm just gonna pass it high and off the net in, in the middle of the court. And that is, a, that is a pass that most setters are gonna be able to get two great options out of. And also it gets me back in my groove and then as I get better and I feel more confident in the game, I can start narrowing my aim to be more perfect. So aiming high and off is a trick that I think is for elite passers because you realize this isn't my day or this isn't my game. So rather than trying to be perfect and overpassing it or putting my setter in the net or, or going a little too far right, I'm just gonna aim high and in the middle of the court. So this is what those passes would look like. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just rearrange my target to be this big area, nice and high, and usually those passes will end up being better and you'll have more consistency. And you'll have more goods than perfects, which in the long run I think is better. Having a bunch of goods as opposed to having a few perfects and a few aces. So let's see how that looks. short serves. A lot of times people think, oh, if there's a short serve, I'm just going to go like this and dart it up to my setter's hands. But really, that's going to speed up the whole game for your offense. It might be difficult for your setter. So if you see a short serve, if you can come in and get that high and maybe pull it like a foot or two off, most of the time that's going to help you and also help your offense. Okay, well, we're done with the video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If we just quickly review, the first tip was reframe your role. The second tip was be trustworthy. The third was take mental notes. The fourth was move on, move on. And the fifth tip was, I just did it, aim high and off. So I hope those things will help you. Once again, like I said, I'm not teaching you how to pass the basics. I'm teaching someone who's already a good passer to have five more things in their toolbox that they're thinking of and they can call on when things get difficult in serve receive and when we're passing. If this video was helpful for you, please comment down below. I love knowing what you guys like and I'm gonna have videos every single Monday. So if there's more stuff you wanna see, make sure you comment it. Um, and also subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you get the updates, be a subscriber, be a friend. Um, so yes, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your week. Happy Monday and I will see you guys next time.